Hi there, in this video I'm going to complete one of the Jerry Howell 2 jet carburettors and give it a test on my uh, Hoglet V-Twin. OK, so the component I'm going to make is the throttle arm hub and the throttle arm which uh, will be both soldered together and that's the component there which will fit on there and uh, I've got this piece of brass bar which I've turned down to be 0.4 of an inch high and 0.44 of an inch wide and I think the way I'm going to approach this, I've calculated this dimension here to be round about 80 thou and the height needs to be uh, 40 thou to come off so I think first of all I'm going to mill this section out here once I've done that I think I'm going to drill and ream through 0.187 of an inch and then when I've done that I think I'm going to flip it over and then drill and tap for a 2b56 UNC bolt like that so that's the plan well having looked at the drawing again I've decided to cut in um, by 90 thou instead of 80 but I'll still cut to a depth of uh, 40 thou So I've just deburred it and I'll cut the other edge to the same dimensions but I'll do that off camera. Well bearing in mind I need to make four of these I'm trying to do as much machining as possible without uh, involving any, any repetition. Um, so uh, I've got it perpendicular to the vise and uh, I've got this 4.5mm uh, drill bit I've already centre drilled so I'll drill to a depth of around about an inch and that should enable me to get four pieces out of that hopefully. So for the uh, thread for the bolt, I uh, centred on the corner and then I moved the uh, y-axis uh, 35 thou that way and uh, 95 thou to the right and I centre drilled. Um, so what I need to do now is to uh, drill through with this, uh, um, let me see, a number 50 drill bit right through, then I'll uh, drill again halfway through with a 2b56 uh, clear drill and then I'll tap uh, 2b56 on the lower bit but I'll do all that off camera well so far so good I, I countersunk it to take the head of the screw and um, what I need to do now is to cut it off on the bandsaw oversize and I'll put it back on the mill and mill it to a width of um, 190 thou. Once I've done that I'll then cut the slot I think or maybe I might put the um, curve on. So this is now quite a tiny part and it needs to be milled to um, sort of a height of uh, 190 thou. So what I'm going to do is um, move the cutter to the bottom of the part, zero the DRO, move it up until it reads minus 190, then zero the DRO, 
and that's where I need to be aiming for. So if I move it right up. So I about 30 thou to go. Well locked. Well those seem to have turned out ok, so to turn the radius I'm going to use this uh, two moss taper mandrel I'm going to put that on the rotary table. So I've just clamped the mandrel down on the rotary table and this clamp here is stopping the uh, piece from rotating. Um, so uh, it's just a matter of uh, moving the table forward or back rather by maybe 10,000 turning the table and putting the radius on so uh, we'll give it a try Well they seem to work out okay and I just cut the slot using um, a hacksaw, um, look alright. So uh, what I need to do now is to make a lever and uh, I'm going to make it out of this piece of brass. So I've uh, roughly put the shape on there, I'll go over to the mill and uh, have a go at milling it. Getting there slowly. It's 
So the idea is to uh, solder the two pieces together now, but uh, it's a bit difficult holding them sort of in position. So I've used this sort of chrome screwdriver just to go through the middle and hopefully when I do the soldering um, the chrome screwdriver won't um, stick. Um, so I've put some solder paste on, on the, the two faces and uh, I'll apply a bit of heat. Well that seemed to work out okay. When I used that solder paste to solder the arm on, um, the screwdriver did stick a little bit, it picked up a bit of solder but I just tapped it out and uh, the rest of it is well, really well aligned. Now it's got a groove in there and uh, see there opening and closing. These two screws here adjust the maximum opening and the minimum closing and the only thing outstanding is to solder a fuel inlet pipe in there. But I'll, I'll do that off camera, I'll just use a bit of solder paste and uh, somebody gave me a fantastic tip a while back. These little springs here very difficult to make and uh, you can get them in these big lighters you just break the top off there's uh, two springs in there this is the coarser one of the two and uh, that's the finer one of the two I've not, not found a use for that fine one as yet but I'm sure it'll come in useful at some point in time so um, I'll do that bit of soldering and uh, then we can give it a try on the uh, hoglet. Well I've stripped the carb down to uh, solder this piece of copper tube into the aluminium body and uh, I found out that you can't really solder aluminium <laughs> and I wish I'd have known that before because I'd have used an aluminium rod to hold those two parts together instead of that stainless steel screwdriver but you live and learn uh, so what I ended up uh, using was a bit of JB Weld which uh, I left overnight and uh, while I was waiting for that to go off I uh, made this uh, little manifold to fit the carb so that will fit uh, hopefully nicely on the uh, hoglet so it's just a matter of uh, putting it all back together again so this jet here has got a flat on it and that goes against this screw like that And this has got an o-ring on it and that goes in there like that and there's another o-ring that goes on the other side and that's held in by the arm Put the needle in. And then it's just a matter of setting the uh, limit screws. But I'll do that bit off camera. Well, there are two designs for the um, Jerry Howell two jet carburetor. This is the one that's most appropriate for the V twin. The other one has got um, a straighter uh, inlet uh, pipe. Um, so it's a slightly different design which would be more appropriate for this particular engine uh, but I wanted to design it um, based around the one for the Howell V twin anyway we'll give it a try
Well, it certainly seems to work okay. It needs a little bit of tweaking here and there, but uh, it's certainly uh, getting fuel into the engine. Well that wasn't a bad first attempt, um, and I need to have a play around with the mixture settings um, but it certainly seems a lot better than the, uh, the other carburetor I used. Uh, it certainly wants to uh, rev this little engine quite a bit higher. Um, but uh, like I say I need to have a play around and uh, see if I can uh, uh, tweak it a bit better. Um, but anyway, in my uh, next series I'm planning on having a go at making the Jury Howell V-Twin engine which is far more complicated than this um, so I don't know whether I'm going to set my sights too high uh, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a try I've ordered um, the bearings and the seals from uh, the Jury Howell website uh, so I'm expecting those to arrive in the not too distant future and I've also um, ordered a, a chunk of aluminium for the crankcase because uh, it's a, a proper little engine um, However, um, th there might be a little bit of a conflict now because um, Olivier uh, in France, who makes me the uh, little sort of plaques and nameplates, uh, he's offered to uh, uh, design um, a CNC uh, router engraver uh, for me to have a go at building. Um, so he's currently working on those plans. So it might be that I uh, run two series in parallel one for the uh, Jury Howell V-Twin and another one for this uh, CNC uh, router that I'm going to have a go at making which should be very interesting, fingers crossed. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, hope to see you later.